It's TK Friday, and today on The Joy of Editing, it's a vignette deep dive. There's a lot of different types of vignettes in the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. We're going to check those out today. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Happy holidays to everyone out there. I hope you're having a great time. Today, it's another deep dive, this time it's vignettes. Did you know there's a lot of different vignette types in the TK9 plugin for Photoshop? Well, we're going to explore those today. I do have PDF notes for you. I'll have download links in the description below this video, along with links for the stock images, just in case you want to follow along with the stock images. By the way, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And please leave comments and questions. I'd really love to hear from all of you. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, I'll have links in the description below this video that'll take you over to Tony Kepper's web store. There you're going to find the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. A lot of great panels over there you can pick up. Sean Bagshaw's training videos, which I highly recommend. And you'll also find the TK Grayscale and TK Magic Mixer plugins. They're sold as a bundle. You'll get both plugins for $12. If you're into black and white photography, you'll love TK Grayscale and TK Magic Mixer. Use my promo code DK15 and you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. When you use my promo code, I make a small commission. And this helps to support my channel. So I really appreciate it when you use my promo code. And not only are you helping me out, but you're getting 15% off. Well, let's go ahead and dive right into this deep dive. Now we're going to start out with just a basic vignette and you're going to find your vignettes in the TK actions. If your TK actions aren't open, click a TK button on the combo or CX panel and then come up to the top of the actions and click on vignette. Now, a Gaussian Blur dialog comes up, and I usually leave it set at the default radius. Now, it's going to change that radius for each and every image that you work on. It really depends on the size of the image, so that's something to bear in mind. But if you want to increase that radius, you can go ahead and drag this to the right to increase the radius, and you'll see the change take place on the image when you do that. So I'm going to go around where it was and just click OK. Now, it defaults at a 30% opacity. Now, you can increase that. You could just come to Layer Opacity and click right here and increase that. Or if you have the TK Opacity Plus, which is absolutely free, I have links for it in the description below this video. You can pick it up at Tony's web store. Uh, but the other thing you can do is, for instance, you can click 4 for 40% or 6 for 60%, whatever you want. In this case, I think I'll click 5 for 50%. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Now, one thing I like to do if my darks are getting too dark is use Blend Diff to help me. So you could come up to the multi-mask panel, click on the edit blend diff button, and then click no darks one. That keeps it out of the darkest darks or no darks two. It widens that dark range, so it keeps it out of more of the darks. That's a really good tip. And if you watch my TK Friday full edits, I use this all the time. And now let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after, but that's just a basic vignette, but we're gonna move on from there. But first, I have a tip for you. This is really cool. Tony showed me this the other day. The vignette is a curves adjustment layer in the multiply darkening blend mode. Come up to the properties panel and here's your curves adjustment right here. If you click in the center point and drag to the right, you'll increase the vignette. You see that? If you move it to the left, now just go straight across, you'll decrease it. So that's kind of nice that you could do that. If you want to get rid of this point, just drag it off. But that's another option for you. Moving on to the next example, a light vignette. Did you know that we could do light vignettes? Well, we can. All you have to do is hold down your command or control key and click on vignette. You can adjust your radius if you want to. Remember last time it was like 90 pixels, I believe. Now it's 349.8. I'm just going to leave it where it is and click OK. But let me shut off the vignette. Here's before and here's after. See, now we have a light vignette. And let's increase that. Let's try 50%. And let's try 60. I like 60. I don't want the darkest darks getting too light, so I'm going to click the Edit Blend Diff button and click No Darks 2. 
and that keeps those darks from getting too light. Let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after. Every now and then you need a light vignette, and now you know you can do it. I could sure go for a cup of coffee right now. Next up, it's a color vignette. Yes, we can do color vignettes. Let me show you how. Hold down your shift key and click vignette. A color picker comes up. You can sample a color off the image. Let's say I want some more of this yellow down in here. I'm going to click right here and click OK. A Gaussian blur comes up. I'm just going to click OK. And now I'll shut this off. Here's before and here's after. See the color vignette? Now, here's something you can do. You can double click on this icon right here. The color picker comes up and then you can move this around. See the circle move it around and change that color and see the effect take place in real time. What if you want to warm it up? You can take this slider, move it down to warm it or up to move more into greens, whatever you want here. So you can do that. And again, if you want to increase the saturation, move it to the right, decrease it, move it to the left. You can darken it, you can lighten it, whatever you need to do. Let me just click OK. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after a color vignette. I do a lot of flower photography, and when I'm editing my flower images, a lot of times I add a color vignette. It can be quite beautiful, and it works on all kind of images. You just got to figure it out. Give it a try and see how it looks. And again, it defaults at 30%, but you can always increase that if you need more. You know what? I think I like it at 60%. Here's before, here's after. Next up, a freehand dark vignette. There's a lot of nice light coming here in this image, but if I could add a freehand vignette and just darken the areas that I want to to make this light look like it's coming out even more, that would look good. Let me show you how to do it. Now for this, you need to start out with a selection and I like to use the Photoshop selection brush. So click this button to get the Photoshop selection brush. Now this is important. Come up to the menu and click right here and make sure your hardness is very hard. It could be 100%, mine's at 94%, which is gonna be fine because the action actually does the feathering for you. So I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller and what you wanna do is paint over the area that you wanna protect. Like I wanna protect all this area down in here. I know it looks ugly, but it's going to get feathered. And now click on freehand vignette. A Gaussian blur comes up again. You can change it. I'm just going to click OK. And let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. See how it protected this area right here? Now that's too strong, I think. So I'm going to go down to 20%. I'll click on my two. Or you could click right here and drag the slider back. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. This is really great when you need to do things like this, where I want to make sure the viewer really sees this light. So if I darken the areas around the light, the light shines out more. Next up, it's a freehand light vignette. Now with this image, what I'd like to do is these buildings, I'd like to make these buildings get a little bit lighter. So we need to make a selection first. So grab your selection brush, your Photoshop selection brush, and what we want to do is paint over the areas that we want to protect. Like right in here, down into here. Should have made my brush a little larger, but that's okay. I'm just going to paint this in just like that. Now remember, it's going to feather. Hold down your Commander Control key and click on Freehand Vignette. Click OK. And now let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after. See how those buildings lightened up a bit. Now they may be a little too light, so I'm going to click on my 2 for 20%. Yeah, now here's before, here's after. That's a neat little trick if you need to lighten up an area. Next up, it's a freehand color vignette, a floral image with, I don't know what this is, a bee of some sort. Again, we need to make a selection. I'm using the Photoshop selection brush. And what I want to do is just paint over the area I want to protect, like right about in here. Now, if I unclick my mouse, it'll go ahead and fill in that area. That's a little tip when you're using the Photoshop selection brush. We want a freehand color vignette. So hold down your shift key and click freehand vignette. A color picker comes up and pick a color or you can use the adjustment here to go to any tint you want, but I'm just going to pick like a light color like right here and click OK. Now the Gaussian blur dialog comes up. I'm just going to click OK. Now I can double click this and change this to any color I want, like increase the saturation a bit, maybe somewhere right around in here. Again, we can change the tint if we want by adjusting this and I'll click OK. Now here's a little tip. This defaults at a normal blend mode, 
But what if we wanted to try a different blend mode like soft light, more of a contrast look, overlay, we could try color, or we could try linear light. I think I'm going to do linear light. I'm going to click this. We don't see much change here, but here's a little tip. See the fill? This is one of those special blend modes where fill really matters. And I'm going to click right here and drag this to the right. See what's happening there? I can really increase that amount. And I'm going to go to like right there, 70%. I'm going to double click right here. And let me see, I may want to make this lighter. Yeah, I want to make this a little bit lighter, a little less saturated. Maybe somewhere right around there. Click OK. And maybe increase the opacity for the layer to like 40%. Make it a little stronger. Let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after. Is there anything else we can do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Click on the layer mask and come to the properties panel and take this feather. Watch what happens when I drag this over to the right. You see what's happening there? The mask is feathering out a lot more. And I just like the way it's blending into this area a little bit better. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. But isn't that nice? A flower image like this adding a tint of the color that's already in the image. It can really bring that image all together. Again, here's before and here's after. I think I'll bring this back to 30%. Yeah, I like that better. Two examples to go. Now, these are special types of vignettes. One's called Spotlight, one's called Dimmer. For this image, we have this woodpecker. And what if I want just to spotlight him a little bit? Here's what we can do. Come to the Converse CX panel and click this button right here to select our subject. And we have a nice tight selection on the subject. For the spotlight, you can use any type of a selection tool, lasso, selection brush, whatever. But in this case, select subject makes the most sense. If your TK actions aren't open, go to the Combo CX panel and click a TK button and then come up to your TK actions. Click on Spotlight Dimmer. A Gaussian blur comes up. Again, you can adjust the radius if needed. Click OK. And what we have here is a Curves Adjustment Layer in the Screen Blend Mode. Let me shut off this layer. Here's Before, here's After. See how that woodpecker got spotlighted and now more attention is drawn to it. And now I think I'll increase that opacity a little bit. I'll click on my 4 to go to 40%. Here's Before and here is After. Pretty cool. That was Spotlight. And now let's check out Dimmer. Now for this image, you know, all this area back in here to me is a little bit too light, even under here. So we're going to use the Dimmer to correct that. I'll use the Photoshop selection brush. I'll click it. And what I want to do here is like just paint like right up in here, like all around this lemur, like so right into here, up into here. I'm just looking for areas that I want to dim down because they're too light drawing the eye maybe over to here, and I'll come under here and paint like that. Oh, I missed the spot right here. And now come up to your TK Actions and hold down your Command or Control key and click Spotlight Dimmer. This will give you a dimmer. A Gaussian Blur dialog comes up. I want to decrease the radius a bit, and I think I'm going to take it back to like right there. 147, click OK. And now let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after. Really nice. I want a stronger effect. Let's try 60%. Here's 70. Here's 80. You know what? I think I like 80%. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. But that is the dimmer, which is a part of the family of vignettes in the TK Actions. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's deep dive into all the vignettes found in the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. If you did, please give this video a like. Share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon, click all so that you receive all notifications, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.